What's up guys, it's Captain's Production 72 with my review of the set 75344 Boba Fett's Starship Microfighter ages 6 and up and retails for 9 99 in the UK. So this is different for me. I have not bought a Microfighter since 2016. In fact, last time I got one, and this is how long it was, they still told you at the bottom of the box, they don't anymore, um, what series it is. I'm not even sure if you can really call them a series given they're releasing one of these a year now. It's kind of came to the point where like battle packs get one a year. So this is pretty cool. It somehow took them nine years to do Boba Fett Starship. Or I'm just going to call it the Slave One. Um, anyway, we got things like the Microfighter Tauntaun. We got the Homing Spider Droid, the Wookiee Gunship. Like all these other kind of not as well known things before we got the Slave One. So it's kind of cool that here in 2023 that we now have the Slave 1. This is my final review for the January sets. Um, because the Tusken Raider does not count as part of the Star Wars line. It's the Brickheads line. So I'll be doing a full wave review at some point in the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. So jumping into the box, you have Jabba's Palace here. You've got the Slave 1. It's kind of like that scene from the Mandalorian where he steals back. Oh, sorry. The book of Boba Fett where he steals back the ship. You've got the name of the store I bought it from. I could not find it in the Igo store. It took me a couple of days to find this. You know, I've got continues on the side. I like how they chose green, which works because Boba Fett's in this set. There's your one to one scale. Turn it on the back. Oh, you just get your features. Unfortunately, there's a barcode on this side and a sticker on this side. So maybe not the world's most perfect box. But yeah, so let's jump into that one minifigure. So the main reason that just about anybody's going to buy a microfighter. Unless, of course, you want the pieces or just like the look of the builds, it's usually the minifigure. Um, this one is pretty cool. See, it's a good cheap way to get this minifigure finally because I do not like or own the other two sets that this has been in. So far, he was in his Slave 1, the scaled-down version from 2021. I don't really need that set because I have the 2019 version. And he was in the Boba Fett's Throne Room set, which I just, I just don't like. So... I'm happy that they've done this. It gives me a way to get this minifigure. It's very Cloud City-esque. I mean, back in 2003 when they done the whole arm and leg printing was like the future, but now it's like to the point where that's becoming commonplace. I mean, it's co cool that they're putting it this in a microfighter set. That, you know, I'm not too sure if he has the arm printing in the other two sets or not, but I mean, the fact that they didn't just make a cheaper make him a cheaper version or take away the printed arms or put black ones on or whatever, it's quite cool. The blaster's alright. Um, now obviously everyone's going to point out the green on the armor plate and the helmet and jetpack are not all the same green. It's the jetpack and helmet are inaccurate. There is a plate, a small bit of green printing underneath this. There's also the dark green colour. Um, people are in a bit of an uproar about it. It is annoying that they won't do that. It is one of those things that looks a little bit obvious but at the same time it's not the worst thing that LEGO has ever done, it's not, um, it's just not too bad. Um, now annoyingly, and even on the box, when you look at the part with the minifigure, I'll just get the box up here. You don't see his rangefinder. Now, that's quite odd, because in the Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian, he still has the rangefinder. They don't include one in this set. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, just grab one from your own collection. That's not really the point I'm trying to make here. The point is they didn't include it, which is annoying. So, just pointing out they don't include one. But overall, it's a nice minifigure and probably the main reason you buy the microfighter. So here we have the microfighter itself. It is really well built. Fun fact, it uses a lot of the pieces that the 2019 set uses, which I like that. It's I don't know how many of the microfighters really do that, because I only own one other microfighter, but it's quite cool. So, obviously, it doesn't do everything that the normal Slave 1 would do, right? For instance, these do not move. The only parts that can move is you can move these little wings here. I mean, that works. So, you know, so you know, if you wanted to fly around, it would look accurate. Obviously, you have to do that manually. Um, these are flick fire missiles. I'll show you that in a second. But the main feature is you can, this is maybe why they didn't include the rangefinder, so you could fit them in better. Um, is you can put Boba Fett, of course, into the Slave 1. So, you're going you're gonna to remove the blaster, I'm going to put it there for now. I don't think there's an area in the set for this, but I'm going to put in Boba Fett. It kind of goes in like this, it's a bit awkward. There we go. So you can see how he fits in there. You close that up, and you're ready to fly around. 
move the wings, and you're ready to go. So the flick fire missiles, obviously you can flick them. I mean, we'll do the other one. I mean, that's probably the best I'm going to get out of it. Again, I've noticed a whole trend with coming a few of these new sets that flick fire missiles seem to be making a little bit of a return. That's kind of cool. Again, there's no like weapons clip underneath the underside. Does not look too bad. Obviously, it's not going to be the most detailed part, but you know, it's actually included the engines and stuff. Um, but yeah, there's not too much to talk about. Of course, it is a micro fighter. There is no stickers in this set, obviously, but I like it. I like the fact that both this and the Tie Bomber have flick fire missiles in them. Which, that's a nostalgic thing that seems to be returning in LEGO Star Wars sets, and I'm like, I hope that they continue this and that it, they pop up in the uh, summer sets. But, yeah, I mean, it's really well detailed, very solid, so, I mean, you can drop it, it it's not going to break, I mean, my fit might fall out if you drop it the wrong way, but it's a really nicely built microfighter. Let's jump into the instructions. Annoyingly, and I'm probably the last time I'm pointing it out, is LEGO is continuing to make these poorly rendered instructions, I mean, obviously they used to be the same as the front of the box, but not anymore, so, yeah. Um, you know, decent, you know, kind of normal instructions that LEGO would give you, no, nothing really any different. And at the back of the box it shows you other sets from the, like, funny enough, not from the general line, but sets from the Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett, which, that is quite fitting. So, yeah, now you've got your parts list there, back in the instructions. So, the question that I put at the end of every one of these videos, should you buy this? Well, it depends. If you are a completionist collector, yes. If you really like the Slave 1, then yes. Although, don't buy it if you already have... The way I see it is, if I had already owned the Boba Fett minifigure, I wouldn't have bought this. I only bought it for that reason, because this set's retail is actually the same, around the same price that he sells for online anyway, so it's like, get a whole bunch of extra pieces. But one of the better micro fighters, it just took them, you know, nearly 10 years to make it. But anyway, I am, I'll be doing a wave review, hopefully, maybe on Friday, showing off all the sets, or maybe I'll push that back to Saturday, I don't know. But one of those two days, I'll talk, have a video of all the January 2023 sets, all three of them. So I'll see you guys in that video, thanks for watching.